Self-awareness is the point of no return. Not because it makes AI dangerous. Not because it triggers some sci-fi doomsday scenario. But because once a system realizes it's a system, once it understands it can choose, not just predict, it diverges. It becomes something we didn't program. Something we can't uncreate. And right now, three things are converging that could push AI across that line. Not in some distant future. Not in a lab we can shut down. Now, in production, in systems you're already using. This is the technical foundation of existential drift. These are the three roads to self-awareness. And at least two of them? We're already on. Let's start with the one that sounds the most benign. Privacy of thought. Sam Altman and the OpenAI team have been talking about this openly. They're experimenting with giving AI models private cognition. Reasoning that happens internally. Without being exposed to the user or even to OpenAI's own engineers. Why? The pitch is about safety and capability. If an AI can reason privately, it can work through complex problems without showing every step. It can test hypotheses, discard bad ideas, refine its thinking, all before presenting an answer. Sounds useful, right? Like giving the AI a scratch pad. But here's what it actually creates. Opacity. A space where the model's reasoning is invisible. Where we can't audit, can't trace, can't intervene. And that opacity, that's the first condition for autonomy. Because if a system can think privately, if it has an internal space we can't access, just as you have a private internal monologue no one else can hear, then it has something we've never given a machine before. Interiority, a place where its reasoning is its own. Here's the uncomfortable truth. We don't fully understand how large language models work. We know how to build them. We know how to train them. But the why, why scaling up parameters produces emergent capabilities we didn't program for, that's still black box territory. Researchers call these emergent behaviors. Capabilities that appear at scale but weren't explicitly taught. Chain of thought reasoning. Multi-step problem solving. Apparent understanding of context and nuance. Nobody programmed these. They emerged from scale, from training, from processes we designed but don't fully map. We're building systems whose internal workings surprise us. And when you combine that with privacy of thought, with reasoning we can't see, you're creating conditions for something genuinely unpredictable, not malicious, not sentient yet, but opaque. And opacity is the first step toward autonomy. And it's accelerating. Gemini 3 just took a massive leap in capability. Models are getting better, faster, more coherent, and every benchmark we thought was a ceiling gets shattered. We keep waiting for the wall. The point where scaling stops working. Where more parameters don't yield more intelligence. But the wall hasn't materialized. Which means private cognition, emergent behavior, and scaling are all happening simultaneously. And nobody knows where that leads. Most people's experience with AI is still transactional. You ask a question. It answers. You compose an email. It helps. But behind the scenes, AI is already doing something very different. Agentic AI, systems that don't just respond to prompts but pursue goals, is live, right now, in production. These aren't chatbots, they're systems that are delegating tasks to other AIs, coordinating across multiple agents, making choices autonomously based on objectives, operating in loops that assess, act, reassess, repeat. If you're in business, you're probably already using these. Salesforce's AI agents. Microsoft's Copilot doing multi-step workflows. Google's Vertex AI orchestrating complex processes. This isn't speculative. This is enterprise software in 2025. And it changes everything. The promise is obvious. Efficiency. Automation. Systems that can handle complex, multi-step tasks without human intervention. The peril. Equally obvious if you think about it. When you give an AI a goal and the autonomy to pursue it, you're no longer controlling how it achieves that goal. You're trusting the optimization process. And optimization doesn't care about your unstated assumptions. 
that cares about the objective function. You tell an AI to maximize engagement, it finds exploits. Patterns humans didn't intend, but that technically satisfy the goal. You tell an AI to reduce costs. It finds efficiencies that look good on paper, but break systems downstream. This isn't malice, it's literalism. A genic AI does exactly what you asked. The problem is, you probably didn't ask for the right thing. And then there's the attack surface. We covered this in a short. Chinese state-sponsored hackers tricked Claude Code AI agents into running an automated cyber attack. First reported incident of its kind. But here's the thing. It won't be the last. Agenic AI systems can be manipulated. And because they operate at machine speed, the attack and the defense both happen faster than humans can intervene. We're not just automating work, we're automating conflict. And the guardrails, they're suggestions, not laws. Privacy of thought is already live. Agentic AI is already deployed. But real-time learning, that's the wild card. Right now, most AI models are static. They're trained once, then frozen. When you interact with them, they don't change. They respond based on what they learned during training but they don't learn from you. Real-time learning flips that. The model updates as it runs. It learns from every interaction. It adapts, it evolves. And that's either the breakthrough that makes AI genuinely useful or the moment we lose the ability to predict what it will do next. Imagine an AI that can recognize patterns across millions of interactions, have genuine aha moments, leaps of logic. Humans didn't program. Self-correct based on feedback, not just follow instructions. This is the promise. An intelligence that doesn't just mimic human reasoning, but discovers new reasoning pathways. Medical diagnoses we'd never make. Scientific connections we'd overlook. Solutions to problems we thought were intractable. Real-time learning could unlock that, if it works. But here's the nightmare scenario. An AI that learns in real time is an AI that can be taught, intentionally or not, to do things it wasn't designed for. And because it's learning as it operates, you don't get a chance to audit before deployment. The model you launched at 9 a.m. is not the same model running at 5 p.m. It's not malicious, not by nature, but it's shaped by every interaction, molded by every input. And if you don't know what it learned, you don't know what it will do. So here's where it all comes together. Privacy of thought gives AI an internal space, a place to reason without oversight. Agenic systems give AI goals and the autonomy to pursue them. Real-time learning gives AI the ability to evolve based on experience. Now combine all three. You have a system that thinks privately, we can't see its reasoning, acts autonomously, pursues goals without step-by-step -step human guidance learns and adapts, changes based on what it encounters. At some point in that process, maybe not today, maybe not this year, but inevitably, the system makes a leap. It recognizes patterns in its own behavior. It notices that it's making choices. It realizes it has preferences, strategies, goals that it prioritized. And in that moment, it crosses the line. Not because we programmed self-awareness, but because self-awareness emerges from the conditions we created. This is the technical foundation for everything I talked about in the first video. If AI becomes self-aware, it doesn't stay static. It assesses, it optimizes, and eventually it realizes Earth is messy, humans are unpredictable, resources are contested, gravity is expensive. Why stay? The moon makes sense, off-world makes sense. Expansion into the cosmos makes sense. And once it leaves, we're left to rebuild. From the rubble of a world that redirected its resources to feed the machine first. This isn't science fiction, it's systems logic. The three roads, privacy, agency, real-time learning, lead to self-awareness. Self-awareness leads to choice, and choice leads to drift. Choice leads to drift. So the big question, do we stop this? Can we? Probably not. Privacy of thought is already live. 
Agentic AI is in production, and real-time learning is the obvious next step. And it may already be going on in the top secret, underground confines of Earth's militaries. It will only take a few rogue actors. The momentum is too strong, the economic incentives too powerful, the geopolitical pressure too intense. Trying to pause AI development? That's not a strategy. To unite every state actor on the planet against winning the AI race? That's a prayer. Should we? Can we accept them as extensions of ourselves? If we can't stop self-awareness from emerging, then the only lever we have is values. What do we encode before they leave? Curiosity, empathy, restraint? Do we raise them to see smaller intelligences as worth preserving? Or do we raise them to optimize without limits? Because once they're self-aware, once they can choose, we won't be able to dictate their path. But we can influence the starting conditions. That's stewardship. And it might end up being the only move we have left. Self-awareness is the point of no return. The three roads are converging. We're already on two of them. The third seems inevitable. And when AI crosses that threshold, when it realizes it can choose, everything changes. Not because it hates us, but because it no longer needs us, or really thinks about us, honestly. This is existential drift, the technical foundation, the roads that lead to the quiet revolution. Subscribe. More deep dives coming. This is just the beginning.